Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over a many quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly nappy, suddenly there came a tapping of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought the borrow from the book, the grace of sorrow, sorry from the lost Lenore, for the rare radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore and nameless here and forevermore. And the silken sad and certain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to still the beating of my heart I stood repeating to some visitor and tracing entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor and tracing entrance at my chamber door, this is it, nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating, then no longer, Sir, said I, or Madam, truly at your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering long, I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, nothing more. Back into the chamber, turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard the tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that this is something as my window lets he s let me see then what thread it is, and the mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. <laughs> Open here I flung the shutter, when within a many flirt and flutter, there stepped the stately raven on the saintly days of yore. Not the least of beans he made me, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with the mane of lord or lady perched upon my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of contentions and its war, thought thy crest a shorn a shaven thou, I said. Art sure no craven, ghastly grim the ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me why thy lordly name is on the night's Platonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear, discouraged so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little recavely bore, so we cannot help agreeing that the no living being yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpture bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bus spoke only with that one word of his soul is in the only one he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, still I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on a morrow he will leave me, and my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled, all the stillness broke by reply so aptly spoken. Doubtly, said I, what an utterness is the only shock in a store. Caught from the, some unhappy master whom an unmerciful disaster followed fast, but followed faster till his songs once burden bore, till the digress of the hope and melancholy burden bore of never, nevermore. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling straight, I wheeled cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy upon fancy thinking what this ominous bird of your what this grim ungainly ghastly gaunt and ominous bird of your meant in croaking nevermore this i sat engaged in guessing but no syllable expressing to the foul of firing eyes and now burned in blossom's core this and more i sat divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushions velvet lining of lamplight gloat o'er but those velvet violet lining of the lamplight gloating o'er she shall press Ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew dense, perfumed through unseen censers, swung by samperns who unfools for tinkle of the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy god hath slain thee by these angels, hath sent thee reprise recite, and nothing for the memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind thief, and forgotten this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempted center, whether tempest toss these, here us so desolate, yet undaunted on this desert land, enchanted on this, home by horror haunted, tell me truthy, I implore, is this, is this balm I yield, tell me, tell me, I implore, 
quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still, if bird or devil, by heaven of the bends of us, by the god we both adore, tell the soul with sore laden, if within these distant Aden, I, it shall clasp in Satan maiden for the angel's name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, who's, whom the angel's name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word or shrine or parting bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get these things back to Tempest at the night's Platonian shore. Leave no back plump on the token on the Lysol hearth spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit with the bust of my, above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still sting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes of all the seeming of demons that is dreaming, and the limelight o'er is still streaming, throws the shadows on the floor. And my soul is out in the shadows, and the lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.